a little bit of tragedy and melancholy and it feels to me like a bittersweet victory a bittersweet finale hey music friends this is david vasca a music composer for games and you guys have been enjoying a lot the soulsborne videos that i've been doing and something that you've been asking for is more dark souls music reactions so today we're going to listen to and talk about the theme for soul of cinder from dark souls 3. i know this is the final boss theme for dark souls 3 apparently uh, it has something to do with Gwyn from the first game, I don't know if it's like a reincarnation or, or something, I don't know, I know very little about this game, but we'll figure it out as we listen to the thing, so let's go! say satisfying I mean that the composers for Soulsborne games uh, Motoi Sakuraba from the first Dark Souls and Yuka Kitamura and all the others from the following games they are masters of denying us satisfaction through harmony through music so uh, whenever there's uh, not every time of course but a lot of times whenever there's a very obvious chord sequence that you know especially as a mu musician you know it's supposed to go a certain way they go the whole way and at the end they they change it they don't they deny you the the satisfaction of an obvious resolution of of an obvious cadence and instead they go to something super disturbing or or, or something uh, very ugly and dissonant but here they're being very very obvious with the chord sequences they're even emphasizing over and over again a very obvious resolution and resolution in music means that is a, a tense chord a chord that's supposed to build tension followed by a peaceful chord a, a, a home chord it's what i like to call it because it's a chord that releases tension so it, it, it creates a sense of finality a sense of resolution and they're doing this a lot here like in this part for example listen to this very very obvious and by the book resolution that they're doing here You can definitely feel the sense of finality in these chords here. Right? This final chord here. This is the end. This is the finale. This is the final destination. And of course, they might have done that because it's the final boss of the game. So it, it makes sense in that way. But I, I feel like probably in the story, there's uh, some greater meaning to this, some greater finality, some kind of cycle is coming to an end in the story. You guys can let me know about that in the comments. Oh, again, the, they keep repeating and emphasizing this finale chord. Again, the finale chord. Whoa. There's a very cool build up here at this part. Listen on the left speaker how the strings, they're doing these notes here. And they keep growing and growing and doing it louder and louder. Here, start. It keeps building up. It explodes into this. Beautiful chord. This is beautiful. And again, 
in the finale court. This part feels different. Okay, hold up. Okay, so this part is a little bit more melancholic and tragic than the previous one. They're still emphasizing heavily that finale chord that I talked about, but it's Soulsborn, so you know it's not gonna be happy, it's not gonna be a, a happy finale. So they are modifying this finale chord slightly to give you a little bit of tragedy and melancholy, and it feels to me a little bit like a bittersweet victory, a, a bittersweet finale, because uh, there, there's still that sense of resolution that this card gives, but they're modifying slightly and there's some disturbing stuff going on here. I'm gonna show you. So you can see here that they're playing around with the sensation of finality and resolution of the home chord. They're still using the normal home chord, right, this one, but at other moments they're also doing this. This is still the home chord, but they added a little note called the seventh, which normally wouldn't be a problem, but long story short, this specific kind of seventh here is a little bit uncommon, so it makes the chord sound a little bit ethereal and magical, but also a little bit disturbing, right? So they use this one, and in other moments they also do this, and, and this, again, this is still the home chord, this is a D, with the home chord that they're using, but they moved one little note here that completely screwed this up and made this an extremely disturbing chord. So they're giving us different iterations, different sensations relating to the home chord, to the conclusion chords, it almost makes me think of alternate endings, you know. The first Dark Souls had uh, multiple endings, I assume uh, Dark Souls 3 has them as well. So this that they're doing here seems like a good way to accommodate for different meanings, different outcomes, different sensations that this battle might have depending on a choice on a different ending. Again, finale chord. Beautiful solo cello. Such powerful brass. So dramatic. The high notes. I was going to point out the home chord at the beginning of this section, but then this happened. Oh, that's so beautiful. But hold up. Okay, so for those of you that didn't catch the reference on the piano here, the notes on the piano that you heard on this part are a very clear reference to the Lord of Cinder theme from Dark Souls 1. Right? So, I guess this does have something to do with Gwyn, I guess, because this is the Lord of Cinder theme. Uh, so, I guess maybe it's Gwyn? I, I don't know. The, the game footage that you're watching right now on the video, I'm not, I'm not seeing. I, I add it later. So, I'm not seeing that. I'm, I don't even know what the boss looks like. So, I'm guessing it's either Gwyn or it's some kind of reincarnation of Gwyn or something to do with with Gwyn, but you know what? I, I don't I don't think it's Gwyn, uh, because this yeah this is Lord of Cinder's theme, but not exactly. It's 
slightly different. So I'm gonna take a risk here and say it's not Gwyn. Uh, I might be embarrassing myself here, but check this out. This is Lord of Cinder theme as it is in Dark Souls 1. And this is Lord of Cinder theme as we heard it here in Dark Souls 3. See the difference? This one is a, a little bit lower. See, see how you feel with each one. This is Dark Souls 1. And this is Dark Souls 3. The Dark Souls 3 one is a little bit lower and to me it feels a little bit more melancholic. Especially because of this first note here. But yeah, I'm gonna guess it's not Gwyn that you're fighting here, but probably something relating to Gwyn. Okay, we were about to get into a really beautiful part here. Yes. regret not, not playing Dark Souls 2 or 3 because I feel like the the solo violin is playing a theme that I should recognize that might might symbolize something you guys uh, let me know about that in the comments but yeah aside from that this is beautiful man they went from excitement and power at the beginning with the full orchestra to so much loneliness and tragedy this reminds me a little bit more of the final boss theme for dark souls one which again was very lonely and tragic and melancholic oh and now the solo cello joins in on the right speaker This reminds me a lot of the the ending of the Lord of Cinder theme from Dark Souls 1. Where the music gently, gently fades, almost like a flame, you know, losing its power, losing its light and slowly, slowly fading away as, you know, uh, was the case with Gwyn himself in the first game. I feel like they are doing the same thing here. The music is so gently and slowly fading away. some disturbing notes on the piano very very low note oh and a 
conclusion, the finale chord again. Hey, I've done other videos on Dark Souls music, I'm gonna put a playlist here for you. I've done Orenstein and Smoke theme and Lord of Cinder theme both from Dark Souls 1. And if you're into a different flavor of Soulsborne music maybe, I've also done videos on Bloodborne music and we're gonna put a playlist over here. And remember, whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again, I'll see you there.